is this is Sue, the Duchess of Albert, and I am joined with DJ Starsage and Hello. Nerdy Pam. Uh, Hi. Today we will be discussing our favorite things, so we should jump right into it. So, DJ, what is your favorite food? Well, hello, Sue. It's good to see you, and and I hope you had a good week. We'll get back to those oh. normal topics of things at a, another day. But uh, let's see about our favorite things. My favorite food. Well, I was raised in a house with parents that had simple tastes. My dad was a very meat and potatoes kind of guy, you might say. Mm-hmm. So. Although I lived in a number of different places, I've lived in the Midwest, I've lived in the West and in the, in the mountains, I um, I never really explored my palate until I was living out on my own. And I decided, because I'd lived with somebody who similarly had a very meat and potatoes kind of mindset in the fridge, that I was going to go ahead and have an adventure. So... I um, started to explore the varieties of cuisine that were in my fair city, which um, at the time was the beautiful Mile High City of Denver, where you and I met. I, my favorite uh, cuisines, well, it's a, a blend of different things, really. I really like good sushi, and finding a good sushi restaurant is just hidden treasure when you can find one that serves a variety of different things. And I really miss this one restaurant in Denver, which I've found out has sadly since closed, but they had a happy hour and you can go when they had different items of sushi that you could pick sort of a la carte instead Mm -hmm. of having to order an entire entree. You could have a sampler. It was just absolutely wonderful. They had things with jalapenos and avocado and a Southwest flair with, you know, a bit of the far East. I also really enjoy Chinese food, which among other things in that realm, I like spicy beef. I like spare ribs. I adore spring rolls. Um, That's one of the things that Billy introduced me to. He is something of a health nut in that (laughs) he has basically what's called chronic fatigue. Yeah. And at times he finds himself having to ditch the junk food diet that is so prevalent amongst those who work in retail. Yeah. And he has to get into healthier, healthier practices. So he uh, likes things like spring rolls, which apparently are very simple to, to make, but are very healthy, to, uh, very tasty if they're made well. And of course, I adore egg rolls too, but they're a little less healthy. Usually they're rolled So what is the difference fry. between egg rolls and spring rolls? I think, you know? <laughs> I think spring rolls are, they're traditionally rolled in rice paper. So they're a more delicate item than an egg roll. They're not fried or baked, and they usually have more what you might consider a um, a salad type variety of items in them. Like you would have some like greens in it. You might have some bits of shrimp. Um, just a very light item, and it's in rice paper. So it's a very thin but chewy thing and it's just delicious because sometimes they also have mint in it so it just kind of um, mm-hmm. wakens your palate but some of my other favorite things are from the far east as well i in, just adore good indian food i've i've grown to learn that there's a difference between savory and spicy and a lot of what people think of Indian food or perhaps even Mexican food as Americans who might have grown up with a bland palate, so to speak, Mm -hmm. that people tend to think of spicy as anything that's just plain hot. And a lot of people don't aren't aware that there are degrees of spicy. And often if you go to a good Thai or Indian restaurant, you know, they, they will offer you the courtesy and ask you, you know, what level of heat <laughs> can, can you endure? You know, it's 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 like picking out the ride at the amusement park. You know, uh, what kind of extreme roller coaster are you ready for? <laughs> so 
in the Indian food, I try to stay somewhere in the middle of the heat. Sometimes I'll go a little bit higher just to challenge myself, but I enjoy in Indian food. I like um, this dish that is consisting of a coconut milk base that mm. has different herbs, usually prepared with chicken. And mm-hmm. it has different herbs within it. So it's very savory but creamy as well. I also adore the flatbread that uh, is made in the Indian culture, which is called naan. Yes. Going into the realm of Thai food, which is, a, I, I would like to call it a cousin of sorts since it's the Far East. I enjoy the tea that's in a lot of Thai restaurants. That's They call it Thai tea in some places. And I'm not quite sure what it's a mix of, but I believe it includes coconut milk in it. And it just has a very sweet and savory taste to it. So those are among some of my favorite foods. Okay. Uh, Pam, what about you? I don't eat cow products. I don't eat pork or pig of any kind. Mm -hmm. So pretty much fish and and vegetables. (laughs) That's a really healthy diet. Yeah, for the most part try i mean there are too many carbs that sneak in because i like to bake with doing vegan baking it's a little bit of a challenge but Mm -hmm. But, mostly i like to make my own bread (laughs) cooking guru who i've uh become enamored with and her name is laura miller she's on tastemade t-a-s-t-m-a-d-e on youtube and at I'mLauraMiller.com. Gone through, I don't know, I would say six, six of her recipes. There are some I, I know I'm just not going to like anyway. Yeah. The cauliflower that's made of steak. <laughs> uh, there's a tomato, the chili, which you can make any way that you would like. But and actually my favorite there's i always make larva and then freeze it i actually took it to a party last year at halloween and had to go over so she has kind of been my guide through, through <laughs> me well, that's where i've been exploring that sort of thing eight or nine months almost a year yeah and she's got this very dry sort of she's got a very deep one she's that pretty much covers your favorite foods i guess my favorite foods would also be chili eating chili in the winter but more of a hearty uh meat and beans and and those red chilies that uh, are dried and and i don't think they're anaheim chili or chilies but they certain or peppers but they certainly have a certain look to them but they're somewhat hotter than that a good mix of chili pepper which i have still not quite mastered my mother put things together and she didn't necessarily teach us those things and since she is no longer with us, i have no way of learning some of the things i also i i think all of my favorite foods really come from my mother uh she also made this wonderful coleslaw and she made her own coleslaw dressing. And believe it or not, she made it. She started with a base of evaporated milk. Mm-hmm. She put honey and sugar in it and and vinegar to, to thicken it so that the milk would thicken like cream. Mm-hmm. If you're making real coleslaw uh, dressing, it usually starts with basic cream, very heavy cream. Those are sort of my favorite foods. I I also like to, if I'm going out, I I like South American, well, Central and South American foods. And I've also gotten a slight taste for Caribbean foods. Uh, I don't know what possessed me to do this, but 20 years ago or something, I bought a Caribbean cookbook. Mm-hmm. And... Of the, uh, I, the things I've made out of that, I really like. And gravy. And I try, you know, like milk and and um, and meat-based gravies uh-huh. with flour. And that was just kind of disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> but the other Caribbean foods are, are quite good. Yes, and, and I think that's that's pretty much it. I like everything except... Cooked spinach and coles, er, and uh, sauerkraut. 
Oh, yeah. If we're going to save things we hate, I'm just going to say I have a few throwbacks to when I was in the high chair. And yes, I can remember those days. Um, (laughs) My mother was a a, a very busy nurse. And so it was up to dad to feed us. And I just have some memories of being in the high chair and fed a few things. And unfortunately, uh, unlike my co-hosts, I am not a fan of chili. At least not the kind with beans in it. I mm. will eat Texas chili with the you know, strips of peppers and tomatoes and whatnot. And I did date a very vegetarian att- at one point that got me to try a lot of new things. And I'm not talking about in the bedroom. But yes. um, <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't gotten over that one little fear. So anyways... Well, that's that's everything on my favorite food. We should move on to favorite drinks. So, DJ, what is your favorite drink? Okay, well, that falls into a few different categories. So we'll cover both the adult and non-adult beverages. <laughs> there could be a whole discussion about coffee and tea. And my sister gained an appreciation for coffee in her early teens, and she would often sneak some of mom or dad's coffee. <laughs> and dad loved his coffee like fudge, meaning he adored a healthy dose of sugar and creamer. And he liked to dunk his peanut butter toast in it like a donut. So you knew when mm. you had dad's coffee because, well, it was nice and sweet and creamy and you probably got some toast crumbs. Yeah, a bit of <laughs> peanut butter sounds good. Yeah, so uh, I don't know where I got the idea to do this, but I thought I was going to be a a grown up. And uh, when I was not even in my teen years, I decided I'm going to brew a pot of coffee. Mom and Dad haven't woke up yet, and I'm going to have a cup of coffee and be an adult and drink the pa- drink my coffee and half the paper. I poured myself a cup of black coffee and decided I was going to take a drink. And it was the most horrible thing to me. It was, I it thought it tasted like drink, licking a brown paper bag. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I never thought of that, but yeah. <laughs> but thankfully, I came around to coffee as I grew up and went out on my own. So I like all sorts of incarnations of it, mostly hot versions. I, I like uh, hazelnut. Of caramel, chocolate, coconut, cinnamon. My favorite at Christmas time is a uh, hazelnut and cinnamon. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, it doesn't agree with Billy as much, so we don't have it every day during the holidays. <laughs> I, I'm not as fond of the iced coffees that a lot of places serve, only in that some of the restaurants that aren't coffee shops who've decided that they should serve coffee too have yeah. che- have cheapened their product in that. Not only is it a coffee-flavored beverage now, but it's more of a diuretic than coffee is normally. (laughs) So um, let's just say, if you remember in the 90s, Beavis and Butthead characters on MTV, they used to joke about they want a cappuccino, or they would call it a crappuccino. Yeah. And so I have taken to calling or we have taken to calling the iced coffees that are served at fast food restaurants crappuccinos because shortly after drinking them, you're going to need to find a bathroom. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Aside from the flavored varieties of coffee, uh, one of my favorite beverages in the non-adult world is a nice hot chai latte with a wonderful creamy foam to it. I think that's the uh, perfect drink for being home by myself with. And it's great that you can buy it in a box and just take it out of the fridge. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And if we uh, venture into the realm of adult beverages, it was a well-known fact that my grandparents on one side had a problem with the bottle, if you'll pardon the expression. So my father never had beer in the house which is almost sacrilege in the world of the working man. So uh, (laughs) he, he, uh, he hid his stash, and every once in a while, Dad would have a sip of his beer when no one else was around. So Mm -hmm. we were raised to think that 
beer was evil. I, I haven't really caught on to the the craft craze where you know you, you have all these independent brews and things. Mm-hmm. I, I am actually more of a just a uh, uh, a Bud Light with lime. Yeah, <laughs> As, uh, that's one of Baron Frosty's favorite drinks. Is some wines, I'm not as much a fan of the reds as I am a white wine, and I prefer sweet versus dry, which is an interesting conversation in my household because Billy prefers dry, and so I would have to finish my segment, of my uh, discussion on drinks, with admitting my favorite adult beverage is a nice dry hard cider my brother would always hide a jug of cider when the fall would come mm-hmm. and he would he would quote unquote forget it in a closet somewhere just so that he could have a nice buzz later on when he finally <laughs> opens it yeah i'm of the opinion that the best ciders are dry i don't care for the popular ones that are all sweet and mostly like apple juice and as much as I enjoy the actor, I do want to give a stern talking to Sir Patrick Stewart because <laughs> he has chosen to be the spokesperson for the Strongbow brand of cider. And I'm sorry, I don't find the appeal. It tastes just like apple juice with a little, a little bit of a tang to it, which is interesting and ironic because apparently Strongbow is also part of the parent company who owns my favorite cider, which comes from Ireland, which is known by two names. It's either known by Mainers, which is M-A-G-N-E-R-S, or Bulmers, B-U-L-M-E-R-S. And the difference is that one brand is the one they're allowed to sell within Ireland, and the other brand is the one they sell outside the country. So, Pam, what is your favorite drinks? Let me put it this way. My coffee maker has a backup coffee maker. <laughs> I earlier this year. Ah. <laughs> and it was an immediate problem. Ran into, into the storage room and I got the backup coffee maker, which is making the coffee right now. Yeah. I had to give it a good cleaning. <laughs> Last week it was starting to make coffee that was not as good as I would have hoped. They're actually contemplating not only buying a coffee maker, a new fancy upscale better coffee maker, but then just in case buying a backup coffee maker <laughs> for the backup coffee maker in case yeah. I need to get one. So well, that's I, and what I am contemplating <laughs> what I am having well, I gave it a good cleaning. That seems better now. I replace it eventually but what i would like coffee my get as far as a main new better scale coffee maker is uh the folks who make the ninja now have a ninja coffee station hmm. yes that makes uh three different strength of brews uh, or no three different sizes four different types of brew and uh, it, it kind of does everything yeah I need a backup coffee maker, you know, after then I'll primary spot and I can put the backup coffee maker back where it was until I need to replace the backup. Yeah. Yes. In terms of alcoholic drinks, oh my, I would guess I would have to say of some variety thing, or they are my favorites, kind of a mid so. I Riesling, the middling Riesling. Yeah. You know, if I just if I'm just grabbing, honestly, it's usually Diet Coke or something. yeah. So I'm I'm simple in those terms. I'm not paying a severe amount of attention. <laughs> well, yeah, and I think many of us do just grab something. Okay. My favorite favorite beverage is probably Coke, but for many years of my adult life. I drank coffee. I drank a pot of coffee before I went to work in the morning. I drank God only knows how much during work while I was at work. And I drank three or four pots of coffee when I got home at night. I like my coffee black. I don't care if it's fancy coffee. I don't want it flavored with anything. 
I just want coffee. <laughs> and I, that's the way I still drink my coffee. I, this is, I think that's exactly why you would love the Gilmore Girls, because there's the scene where the mother is going into this bakery because she is avoiding her usual coffee shop because she and the owner are we're in a relationship and had a falling out. Mm-hmm. So she's, she's quote unquote cheating on him by going to a, another place, <laughs> but uh, you know, to get her coffee and the person mm-hmm. behind the counter doesn't know her. So they didn't understand that she's in a rush when she goes up to the counter and she says, coffee, coffee, coffee. And oh, they no. thought that she wanted three coffees to go. <laughs> but I well, digress. That, that wouldn't have been that big of a problem. Um, but uh, I also am fond of tea. Now, I will drink some flavored teas, and I will sometimes drink tea with sugar and cream. Because when I was a child and we felt bad, if somebody hurt our feelings or we were feeling sick, mom would feed us tea with cream and sugar because she drank tea. And we didn't really like tea, just plain. Because just like you don't like coffee, just plain, uh, I didn't quite understand the flavor. It's a little sophisticated flavor for for a child. And and so she would feed us coffee or tea with, with cream and sugar in it. And when I when I'm feeling sorry for myself or I'm missing my mother or other people, I that's what I want to drink is tea with cream and sugar in it. But I like other teas as well, other kinds of teas, and and I will drink tea with that without cream and sugar. Was there a, uh, was there a particular tea that was a favorite? Like was there one that was your mom's favorite? My mother drank for years and years and years. Mother drank just regular tea, Lipton tea. Okay, you know, brewed in, brewed in a pot, and it needed to be hot. And she never drank coffee. She hated coffee. Uh, she would drink coffee in polite society if, if necessary, if they, they didn't have tea or, or something else. Mm-hmm. She, she would drink water, lemonade, what have you. She'd drink Kool-Aid with the kids, whatever. But she wasn't really very fond of coffee. I Not saw chocolate. a documentary on, a very long documentary on the history of coffee and on public television. And uh, coffee basically got its start in America because it's tea. And <laughs> you get it from the plantations down in the south once the once they gotten it from the Arabs. And yeah. really the only pretty much ubiquitous drink that anywhere in some variety on every... And it's the only food or beverage of any kind shops devoted to it every culture that could but in america yeah it. to add to if you listen to the british they will tell you the coffee they, they don't drink coffee nearly as much as we do but they will talk about coffee having been brought over from the from america from the united states and mm-hmm. And it is frequently offered to Americans because they think that all Americans like coffee and don't like tea. Oh, yeah. Well, when, <laughs> we, when we visited Ireland last summer, it was an interesting experience being in the restaurant for breakfast because mm-hmm. we were probably one of a very few of Americans staying. And in the restaurant when we went for breakfast, one of the guests came down, and I think he may have been Italian, mm-hmm. and he was looking for coffee. But, of course, I think he was probably looking perhaps for espresso. And so the server had to explain that all they had on the buffet in the restaurant was Cafe Americano. Ah. (laughs) And, of course, he was disappointed. Yeah, that could be any number of things um, and not necessarily very good. Although I like wines and beers and uh, stuff. I like dark beers uh, like Guinness. Uh, better than than the light lighter beers uh but um my favorite adult beverage is a black russian <laughs> oh, that is just i've not that had down one. just like chocolate yeah i've not had one what is in a black russian uh vodka and Kahlua, no. and it just it's like drinking chocolate Ooh, it's really it's really good <laughs> 
I haven't had one for a long time, but that has got to be the, my all-time favorite. I think that was even used as a punchline in a Leslie Nielsen film. <laughs> so the next thing we have on our list is music. So, DJ, music. Okay. Well, I grew up in the uh, early 80s, so I'm... My tastes center around mostly 80s and 90s music. Mm-hmm. I work with a lot of younger people. Uh, and No, I don't work with youth. But in my workplace, <laughs> it seems like a lot of my coworkers are in their 20s. Yeah. And so I, I'm, I'm getting into that generational struggle where I realize I'm getting older because what I listen to is no longer popular music. Yeah. Um, but I grew up with siblings who lived to watch MTV. I remember I was quite young still, but I remember being woken up in the middle of the night to sneak down into the living room down the hall and we would shut the door so that we could watch TV while mom and dad were sleeping because in our household, (laughs) MTV was taboo. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, mom was church going and dad was raised with an, an, an aunt who was a nun. So, okay. So in our household, uh, MTV was not on the television if mom and dad were in the room. So I, I grew up with some of the uh, best artists of the 80s and 90s being in my ears most of the time. Mm-hmm. My first artist that I followed regularly, if not religiously, was, of course, uh, Cindy Lauper And it pains me to think that some people will only know her from her wild outfits and the girls just want to have fun song when she's had, I think at least 13 albums and Mm -hmm. in, in her later years, because she is in her sixties now, she's decided that she will have fun with her career. She's no longer striving to have top of the chart songs. She's branched out and has actually recorded albums from different genres just to explore her um, talent and have fun with the music. Mm -hmm. So her latest album is actually a country album called Detour. Aside from Cyndi Lauper, I have really enjoyed the, uh, the work of Annie Lennox. I also enjoyed George Michael, one of very few male artists that I like. I think it's sad that he hasn't had any original material in recent years. And I hope that changes soon. Um, But I also like, Melissa Etheridge going into the 90s. And more recently, I enjoy the work of Lady Gaga and Mm -hmm. Sia. And I think, but yeah, I I don't find myself listening to a lot of the current music. And, um, you know, when you come to that realization, you also understand that you're getting older now because the music that you grew up with is now the new soft rock. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> the music they're selling commercials to yes and you used to be able to shop in supermarkets too yeah <laughs> okay so and and pam what what music is pam? i i hate to be kind of disappointing there is not a lot i listened to mm. if i'm pressed i'm, just, I, I'm kind of that i grew up in the 80s if i Maybe house cleaning to do. I'll go ahead and turn the music on from that era, or sometimes in uh, um, Broadway musicals and things like that. Was years ago, I actually since, but I was having, I frankly had an atrocious time learning to read music. I had to give it up. Yeah. Um, it just got to be way too frustrating. I couldn't visually process it in time. To well, keep up certainly. with what the music was supposed to be. Yeah, that could certainly put you off from music at all. Yeah, I had to, oh my, you know, I, I couldn't keep up with what I was doing. So, Pam, would you say that you're uh, more of a, th- a fan well, I, of theater, or what I listen to now? When I was driving back from going for massage therapy, PR, NPR, in my house, <laughs> it's a TV. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
Texas is on, and I'm not specifically watching something. I'm watching CNN. Mm-hmm. My brain needs a constant influx. But I, what I'll do, like a, if I'm doing dishes or that I have a chance to hear, you know, you're cleaning. It's different. You're moving around. You have noise is especially from the sort of the yeah. vacuum or whatever it might be yeah. on some of these uh, radio shows from the 40s and 60s mm-hmm. I really rip those you know now we have books on tape and stuff like that but that's where it started you have a half an hour hit or maybe bore over into the industry of TV that we know, no, Lucille Ball, people yeah. like that, they were big radio yeah. stars before they hit television. That's true, because I I didn't grow up that's, with the television. That's, I grew up with it, with just radio. Okay, my favorite music is from the late sixties, early seventies, because that's when I was in high school and college. Uh, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. Uh, 10 years after those those folks. And of course, um, and I also got a feeling for uh, Broadway musicals, and then they stopped making them. <laughs> 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 Until recently. Now, recently, the musicals have kind of picked up again, but I haven't heard so much of that music. Uh, I, as, as Pam does, I listen to NPR when I'm in the car. That's about the only station I listen to, and they may have music, they may have, or they have a lot of talk shows, you know, where they talk about news and and what have you. I also listen to books on tape and things of that nature, but spending time with my grandchildren who are in their late teens, early 20s now, I'm getting a little more of the more recent music, and also... Figuring out that some of the music that I listened to when I was young is the same music they're listening to. (laughs) And I don't quite get that, but whatever. And my oldest granddaughter loves Frank Sinatra. Oh. So uh, someone I never appreciated that much. I don't hate him, but I not my favorite. And that's about all I have to say about music. We have movies and TV on the list. Do you think we could combine those? Okay, we could. Okay, so DJ, what are you, movies and TV? What are we, what are your favorites in that area? Okay, mostly when it comes to movies and TV, I enjoy human interest stories. Some of my favorite films, and these are things that. Um, you know, when when you go out on your own, you you uh, set up your housekeeping and you buy certain staples like your dishes and your your pots and pans and your coffee maker. Well, mm-hmm. when I got out on my own and I got my first DVD player, there were certain movies that I just had to have copies of because I wanted to watch them until I wore it out. Mm-hmm. And I think my favorite, and of course, a lot of these were uh, books beforehand, was. Uh, Carl, Sav- Carl Sagan's novel, Contact, that was turned into a wonderful film starring Jodie Foster. Okay, yeah, I think I remember that. And it was just, a, just such a beautiful story because, you know, the um, the uh, the main character had lost her mother and was mm-hmm. raised by a single dad, but she aspired to be a scientist. And then, of course, through the story she ends up going on to the ultimate adventure and she's, uh, you know, sent into outer space basically through the Mm storyline. And it's just a beautiful story. And of course it um, illustrates the fact that although there can be many differences between us based on our religious beliefs and whatnot, um, in that story in particular contact, you have, the people who are very devout, religious, and believe that there is a higher power, and then you have the scientists who are there because they want to know how things work. And so, of course, the two have to come together in that storyline, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's very well explored. So that's that's part of what 
you know, draws it to me. It's the human interest story. Some of my other favorite stories or films and television involve that same kind of idea. Um, one of my favorite movies is also another favorite movie is what dreams may come. They had Robin Williams in it. It mm-hmm. explores the afterlife. And it was very powerful because I saw that just before my father passed away. Yeah. And it was a very healing experience because I watched it again after his passing. And I watched it with my sister. And it just provided a healing experience. Yeah. Um, some of the other movies, um, I really enjoy this movie but with Bette Midler and it from the 90s, which ends up being a remake and I'm not sure of the time frame that it's from, but it's just called Stella and it is a story of a single mother raising her daughter and she's in a, um, you know, kind of a, like a coal mining town. Mm -hmm. And so of course working class jobs are, you know, how people got by there. And Mm -hmm. in that story, the, the mother turns down an opportunity to marry the father of her child, who was a doctor. And, you know, when she's asked if she would marry him, she says, oh, good idea. Let's mix some oil and water. <laughs> because, that, you know, they're very different people. But um, I, I also really enjoy this movie called The Time Traveler's Wife. That stars Eric Bana, who uh, recently was in the J.J. Uh, Abrams Star Trek film where he played the uh, Romulan character of Nero. And uh, that's just a wonderful story because the main character is traveling through time and he has no control over it, of mm-hmm. his life. And he keeps reappearing in her life at different points. So it's, it's just a very touching film. Uh, I also really enjoy Star Trek First Contact for no other reason than it depicts the core of the Star Trek mythos in that you get to see the birth of the Federation and how Mm -hmm. humanity survived the future after a terrible nuclear winter. And we decided that we were going to take a chance and build something that took us out into the stars. And of course, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that achievement in the movie allowed us to be, discovered by another civilization and and of course that was our our child learning how to walk moment and my favorite scene in that film that um just kind of embodies the whole storyline is when captain picard is Mm -hmm. is leading his guest lily on a jaunt through the ship after she's been abducted for lack of a better term and of course she's in awe of the enormity of the starship and the captain has to answer some questions she has. She says, well, how much does this thing cost? (laughs) And it's just beautiful dialogue to me because the captain gets to say the economics of the future are somewhat different. You know, we, we don't, uh, you know, uh, work for money. We strive to better ourselves. And Mm so, it's it's just a moment that as you're watching it, it kind of makes your skin tingle because there's such beautiful words and it's such a great idea. Uh, and I'll just finish up by saying that, of course, Star Trek, I have mentioned it in the past, is, is one of my favorite uh, parts of television. Um, mm-hmm. And for some strange reason, I think maybe it's because I had a strong female influence in my house growing up. Um, I, I tend to gravitate more towards female artists, that being mm-hmm. in music and in film. Some of my favorite actresses are Diane Keaton. I, I really adore a movie she was in called Baby Boom, mm-hmm. and it was done in the 80s. And it's just a beautiful New England country setting. And this single woman, who's also an entrepreneur, is having to take on this baby. Beautiful scenery. Um, I also really love this actress, Marsha Mason, who was in a movie called Max Dugan Returns, which is a film version of a Neil Simon play about a woman whose father abandoned her as a child and comes back when he's come into some money and he wants to take care of her and his grandson. But that's called Max Dugan Returns. And I could go on and on, but I'll just say Anne Hathaway 
uh, Vanessa Redgrave and Meryl Streep. And if you haven't seen it, there's a very wonderful Vanessa Redgrave movie that's on Netflix called How About You? And it's set during Christmas time. And it also has Harry Potter's Imelda Staunton, who played Ooh. the um, assistant to the Minister of Magic, I think. But anyways, okay. it's just a wonderful movie. On to Pam. <laughs> okay, and so what are your favorite movies and television shows? The new Kiefer Sutherland show, and I was kind of primed to like that because I was one of those hour one, day one, 24 people for so long. My brain for nine years was wired into nine o'clock. Sutherland was on because uh. that's when twenty four <laughs> was on. So besides besides the Keith or Sutherland's new, uh, the designated survivor, uh, any other television or movies that you really love? Yeah, hey, I've been watching General Hospital for 35 years, so I guess I should say that is my other show. So, yeah, except on General Hospital, what happens is they tend to die and get frozen. I'm not kidding. And then come back. Really? Oh, God. There's, there's <laughs> crazy disgusting. <laughs> I have only watched those things occasionally. With, you know, there's this crazy family of there that's rich and powerful and has a secret evil lab and places and that's how they get their recurrent their actors to recur at will yeah <laughs> that's weird so what about movies you don't did i hear you say you don't go to movies much to like real life i want to lay out 15 bucks for some you know something miserable i could see on television you know? <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can understand Disease that. Disease of the Week movie or Disease of the Week movie or bad personal life on, you know? Yeah. I don't need a big screen for that. When I was a kid, my dad used to, you know, when we went to grocery shopping to the big town, uh, we used to stop in and see a movie or stop at the drive-in and see two or three. Of course, they don't have drive-ins anymore. So what is your perfect day like, DJ? Well, I think that my perfect day would be waking up to a nice hot chai latte with just a creamy foam on top. And I'm not sure of the time of year. It could be fall or it could be winter, but most certainly a day off. Of course, there's a certain guilty pleasure with a day that you have to call in sick to work. So that might be the perfect day, but uh, <laughs> uh, knowing that you've chosen to be home. Um, but uh, that would be followed by a nice pancake breakfast, something with, you know, fluffy pancakes and real maple syrup and possibly toasted pecans. Um, and the perfect day would also include me curling up with a good book, with no one around, no distractions, maybe some light classical music in the background as I listen. And um, I would be at home by myself, but I'd be... And then, of course, um, another nice extension to that perfect day would be there would be a marathon of one of my favorite shows on television, and that would <laughs> you know, be either Doctor Who or Star Trek The Next Generation or... Maybe it's just a marathon of movies, but yeah. it's ideal because I could take a break from reading my book and I could just pick up from wherever the marathon is running on TV. Yeah, And then, of course, if I get bored with the book or the TV, I would play video games and that would be my perfect day. That sounds pretty good. And what about you, Pam? What would your perfect day be? I'd probably get up around, oh, 10 or 11, and we go shopping somewhere for food and find something awesome to cook because I do like to cook. Friends over for dinner, wine, fun political conversation, mm. <laughs> premiere of a great show on TV, maybe get something done in terms of activism mm -hmm. a lot. That sounds good. A nice, well-rounded day. My perfect day would be spent by the St. Vrain River in uh, northwestern Colorado. I think that's northwest. Maybe it's northeastern Colorado. Uh, I, yeah, it is. It's northeastern Colorado. And uh, 
with uh, a good book and lots of things to snack on, like uh, sour red cherries and and uh, maybe green apples because they wouldn't be quite ripe yet. Uh, and maybe a tuna fish sandwich or something. And preferably in the summer because in the winter it would be way too cold to do that. But just laying in the grass, reading and munching on, on good food and maybe from time to time sticking my feet in really cold water. <laughs> um, it just sounds really good. Out in the fall. Thank you for listening to the Far Away Nearby. You can visit our webpage at tfnpodcast.com. Find our fan page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at TFNDJ. Our show is available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Send us an email at tfnpodcast at gmail.com or call and leave a message at 720-230-6919. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at pride48.com.